Good morning, Javier Becerra, Chairman of the Democratic Caucus, uh, joined by the Vice Chairman Joe Crowley and uh, our colleague from New York, Hakeem Jeffries. Uh, we're here after a good morning session of the Democratic Caucus uh, in the House talking principally about the Affordable Care Act. Actually, better put, talking about the millions of Americans who took advantage of the Affordable Care Act and today can talk about having health security so that they don't have to worry about going bankrupt if they happen to have to take their son or daughter to the hospital for treatment. And the best news is not that 7.1 million Americans signed up and enrolled for health security through the Affordable uh, Care Act, but that there are still many more who are doing so because there was such a rush on uh, Monday the 31st to get signed up that many people didn't have the time to or the opportunity to complete the process. And so what we know is that we're going to see more than the 7 million who have enrolled. And that's good news for all Americans because the number of uninsured Americans when it comes to health care is going down. And the number of Americans who are getting jobs is going up. And it's a great contrast. I do want to show, show the scoreboard. Uh, it is a good time of the year. The, this is the season uh, when we find we're in the final four and we take a close look at scores, but uh, this scoreboard's a little bit different. And I have to make a correction. Because today we're going to vote again to either repeal or dismantle a part of the Affordable Care Act, which we found out more than 7 million people wanted to be part of. On top of those 7 million people, let's not forget the over 3 million young Americans who got to stay on their parents' insurance coverage or got to come on to their parents' insurance coverage as a result of the Affordable Care Act. And let's not forget that on top of that 7 million and 3 million, there's somewhere between 3 and up to maybe seven, eight million Americans who today have health security because they were able to apply and receive coverage through Medicaid. And so we see that well beyond 10 million Americans today have health security, mostly because they have private insurance, but probably somewhere north of 15 million have health security as a result of the Affordable Care Act and its combination of private health insurance and Medicaid coverage. That's good news for all Americans. But as you can see from the scoreboard, while we with the president as Democrats have been working to help Americans gain security, whether it's health security or economic security, pushing for job creation, infrastructure programs to help us prepare our roads and our buildings, we're trying to make sure that Americans get a raise, those who work at a minimum wage. Our Republican colleagues have spent zero time on that. Instead, they focused now for the 52nd time to repeal or replace the Affordable Care Act and zero efforts to pass the minimum wage increase, zero efforts to create a jobs agenda, zero efforts to try to strengthen economic security for Americans throughout this country. It's time to get to work. Republicans will say anything these days to try to make their case on the Affordable Care Act, but they'll do nothing to actually make it better. And it's time for us to do something. That's why we get elected, to do something. And so we have much work to do. Many of us are very proud to see so many millions of Americans who have enrolled in affordable health care now have that health security. But we have work to do. We know that there are still millions more Americans who deserve that same type of health security that more than 7 million Americans yesterday showed that they wanted to have. It's time for us to continue to work to make the Affordable Care Act for, work for everyone. So we will reach the day in America where no one has to worry about taking their son or daughter to the hospital and then the next day worry about going personally bankrupt once they receive the bill. With that, let me yield to my colleague and Vice Chairman, Joe Crowley. Thank you, Chairman Becerra, Congressman Joe Crowley of New York. Uh, I do think it's appropriate that we're using a scoreboard uh, here, not only the final four, but this week we celebrated opening day in baseball. Uh, it's a nat our national pastime and something we all look forward to. 
Uh, but this is also a very important week for 7.1 million Americans as well, opening day for many of them. For the first time, they have the opportunity to afford health insurance and health security. That 7.1 million messages that have been sent to the Republicans in the House of Representatives. And what is their response? 7.1 million messages to 52 messages. This really is a little off. It should be 7.1 million here and 52 up here. 52 times that they want to take away health security from 7.1 million Americans. My Republican colleagues, they have an opportunity to embrace the Affordable Care Act and the promise that it provides for millions of Americans who heretofore have not been able to afford their own insurance. Or they can continue to have 53 and a 54th and a 55th and onward messages back to the American people that they want to take away health care coverage and health security for children and adults with pre-existing conditions. They want to tell the women of our country that they who have a, uh, a pre-existing condition of being a woman, that they should be denied coverage. They want to, if they want to tell seniors in our country that they want to open up the donut hole again in a Medicare prescription drug plan, they can do that. I would hope they would turn their hearts and accept that the Affordable Care Act is a law of the land and help provide further coverage for Americans who desperately need it. And with that, I want to turn it over to my colleague from New York, a wonderful new addition to the House of Representatives from the New York delegation, Hakeem Jeffries. Good morning. Let me thank uh, my distinguished colleagues for their leadership, uh, Chairman Becerra and Vice Chair Crowley. Uh, the earth is round, climate change is real, and the Affordable Care Act is a smashing success. These are the facts that can no longer be avoided by our Republican colleagues here on Capitol Hill, many of whom are afflicted by denial syndrome. In New York State, more than 800,000 individuals who were previously uninsured now have health care that is affordable as a result of this groundbreaking law. These are New Yorkers from all across the Empire State. These are individuals who have benefited from urban New York, from suburban New York, and from rural New York. Everybody has benefited from the Affordable Care Act in New York State. And that, in fact, will increasingly be the case all across the country as time marches forward. These are just the facts, not 700, not 7,000, but more than 7 million Americans with access to affordable health care. The question has often been asked around this place, where is the hope and the change? More than 7 million previously uninsured Americans with access to affordable health care is a clear, convincing, uncompromising answer to that question. And so now our colleagues on the other side of the aisle are going to have to decide where do we go from here? Because the Republican agenda to date has been symbolized by three things, delay, destroy, and defund the Affordable Care Act. Now a philosopher once made the observation that the classic definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, but expecting a different result. Today, we will see for the 52nd time an effort to delay, destroy, or defund the Affordable Care Act when our colleagues on the other side of the aisle know it will go no place because they are bankrupt as it relates to ideas. That's now been exposed. The earth is round. Climate change is real, and the Affordable Care Act is a smashing success. Questions? Uh, yeah, the president took the fairly combative tone in his uh, address yesterday, kind of using some good news to really take it to his critics. Why do you think he chose that approach? 
I heard a president who was proud to see that after a botched rollout of the Affordable Care Act, uh, we are now able to say that millions of Americans have the health security that was promised. And uh, I heard nothing but uh, emotion and pride in knowing that we're going to be able to move forward. And what I heard the president say was that we now should try to work together to make even more progress because there's still millions more Americans who are not insured. And so we should now bring those millions of Americans who face the insecurity of bankruptcy if they go use a doctor or go to a hospital, get them to join with those Americans, millions of Americans who today no longer have to worry about that. So I, I heard the president who promised toward the end of last year to make sure that that website worked, talking about how it was demonstrated that people, if they're given a chance, will sign up for these affordable health care policies because, quite honestly, it's good for their families. And I believe I, we have a president who is essentially saying, we got to roll up our sleeves, much more to do. Comments from anybody? I would just say, what's wrong with being passionate? This is something that the president believed in and believes in. It's something we believe in, something we've been talking about uh, for a number of years, many years now. Uh, and uh, yesterday was quite a, a successful day for the president and for his agenda. And um, I, I think uh, that we shouldn't read into this. this. It wasn't indignant. What it was is exactly what the chairman said. I think the president's proud of the accomplishment, despite the hiccups uh, of the rollout. Uh, that at the end of the day, 7.1 and counting million Americans are now enrolled in the Affordable Care Act. And that's something to be proud of. And I think he's proud of it. We're proud of it. Uh, we say that here today. We have been proud of it for, since we voted for the bill. Uh, and now we're seeing it come to fruition. It's very exciting uh, to know that 7.1 million Americans today who have health security uh, and, and at the same time, we know we have challenges ahead of us. As the chairman said, there are millions of more Americans who want to have coverage who don't have that opportunity yet. Uh, and at the same time, we have other challenges. We know that we have hostility here in the House of Representatives towards the Affordable Care Act and towards the efforts the president has made. And as my colleague from New York, Mr. Jeffries, mentioned, they're bankrupt of ideas. They have no ideas. They have no sense of what the future should hold for America except one that's going backwards as, a, as opposed to going forward. That has been the agenda of our president. It's been the agenda of the Democratic Caucus in the House and the Senate, and will continue to be in, in, as, for, the, for, the for the foreseeable future until we can find a partner within the Republican Caucus who will work with us. First, with regard to the Republican, the Ryan Republican budget, um, I believe it was Republican Speaker John Boehner who has just recently said he doesn't think that the Republican majority is going to even bring up the Republican, the Ryan Republican budget on the floor for a vote. And so I'd be interested to find out if Republicans think there's anything good in the Ryan Republican budget. I will tell you what I find probably uh, the cruelest joke in the uh, Ryan Republican budget. And that's that while we're about to take the 50-second vote by Republicans to repeal or dismantle the Affordable Care Act, the Ryan Republican budget takes all of the savings from the Affordable Care Act, takes all of the revenue from the, Ryan, uh, from the Affordable Care Act, and uses it to fictitiously balance the Ryan Republican budget. So what they're about to do not only undermines the health security of millions of Americans by taking this 50-second vote today on the floor to dim dismantle and diminish uh, health security, but it also undermines their own Ryan Republican budget because every time they stick it to the Affordable Care Act, they're sticking it to their own Republican budget. So it's ironic but quite honestly, it's, it's, it's also, I think, the kind of game that's being played here in the House of Representatives where nothing is being done. As I said before, it seems that some of our colleagues will say anything but do nothing. And what we need to do is get to work because there's still a lot of Americans who want to get to work. 
And we should be talking about a jobs agenda. We should be talking about increasing the minimum wage. We should be talking about paying equal, uh, uh, equal pay for equal work. And we should be talking about the things that make America work. And right now, we're doing anything but rewarding work. We're, we're spinning our wheels and watching as for the 52nd time we vote to dismantle something that's provided health security to so many millions of Americans. I, I would just, as I've said quite often, that uh, the budget is really a statement of our values. Uh, and the Republicans are very clear in terms of the values in this budget. I agree with uh, the chairman in terms of the irony uh, as it pertains to the Affordable Care Act. I also think it's ironic that within their own party, people have said, this bill doesn't cut enough spending. Uh, that's uh, an additional, in this bill, $125 billion to cut further food stamps. Uh, clearly, they've shown who their agenda and what their vision of America and who it's for. It's for the wealthiest in the country, uh, with disregard to the least amongst us, and most importantly, without any regard for the middle class in this country. Uh, that's clear within the, uh, within the Republican uh, budget, as it's been laid out so far. So uh, I think it's intellectually dishonest uh, as well. Uh, and as, as the chairman has pointed out, in terms of the savings that are uh, afforded through the Affordable Care Act, and at the same time, having a 50-second vote today. And I, I'm assuming Mr. Ryan will once again vote uh, to repeal the Affordable Care Act and at the same time uh, promote his budget, which uh, welcomes the savings for the Affordable Care Act. It's very, uh, very ironic, but I think intellectually dishonest. And for the balance of the day, as a member of the Budget Committee, I'll be participating uh, in a markup of the Ryan Republican budget. And that is going to be uh, an important opportunity for the American people to see the differences between the two parties, uh, the radical republicanism uh, and the progressive vision that the Democratic caucus will continue to put forward. Now, the Paul Ryan Republican budget is an outgrowth of the same extremism, the same uh, radicalism, the same recklessness, the same unreasonableness that led the House Republicans to shut down the government for 16 days. There's no other rational explanation for how you put forth a document that, as Congressman Crowley indicated, would cut an additional $125 billion from food stamps, as if the $8 billion cut that you enacted wasn't extreme enough. And the Paul Ryan budget is riddled with examples of that as it relates to turning Medicare into a voucher program, uh, abolishing Medicaid as we know it, which would impact uh, seniors and young children and the sick and the afflicted, on and on as it relates to the extremism that is inherent uh, in the Paul Ryan budget. And so it's not a political issue. Uh, it's an issue of great significance to the American people, uh, and I think we all look forward to drawing the clear contrast today and moving forward. Any final questions? If not, thank you all very much.